So I saw this trailer for this documentary called Babies, and I didn't watch the movie because it looked really boring. But uh, it was about documenting these babies who were born in different countries. Like there was one in San Francisco in this really nice hospital, and then, you know, and he's in this really nice apartment later, and, and the parents are like sanitizing everything. It's just perfect. Then there's another baby that's, that's born in the dirt in Africa and, and just playing with these rocks. And then another one in Mongolia taking a bath in this, in this tin tub with a goat drinking out of it. And it was just showing how they grew up. And, and I was thinking, man, if there was a documentary of a kid growing up in Hong Kong, I feel like it's almost like the kids in Hong Kong grow up on a treadmill. And what I mean by this is, it's like the moment you were born, your parents are signing you up for the best preschool and they're pushing you to crawl before everyone else did and walk before everyone else and, and, and to think better than everyone else. And they're comparing, if you're not walking fast enough, I'm gonna up the speed on you because I have to get you in the best primary school so that you can run even faster. So by the time you're in first grade, man, your algebra better be better than all the other kids. And go, go faster, faster, because I wanna get you in this high school. This high school will help you run Run faster and if you run fast enough you'll be one of those few that make it into that university that university where people run faster than anyone else because if you graduate from there you're guaranteed a job where where you can run so so fast and it just feels like everyone in the city is just running they're just sprinting they're exhausted they're exhausted. They don't even, some of them don't even know why they're running. Except to, well, because if I run after I get my job, then I can make sure that if I have a kid, he'll get in the best preschool. But, but you see these 60, 70 year olds still going after it. And it's not that that's a bad thing. Hard work is good. The problem is, one of the verses that is so difficult for those of us in Hong Kong to follow is Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. You know, I moved from Hong Kong when I was five, but I was raised by Hong Kong parents. And I know, man, it was just all about efficiency. It was all about achievement and the thought of being still to have deep relationship with God, honestly, deep relationship felt like a waste of time because if I slow down, I'm not gonna accomplish the goals that I wanna accomplish. And if I slow down, someone's gonna pass me up. And so we're going, 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 and we're running. And the problem with this is we were created to have deep relationship with God. God made us relational beings. In fact, he, there's a way that we were made in which my very spirit, like the core of who I am, was designed to be like deeply intertwined with the spirit of God. In fact, when he made Adam and Eve, they were in the garden walking with him. That's the way we were designed. In fact, Jesus said, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He said this, this crazy thing where he says, so if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He talked about this oneness they had, but then he says, and I want you to abide in me and I will live in you. This is what I was made for. This is what you and I were designed for, to have this deep walk with God, our Creator. But just like Adam and Eve in the garden, they ran off. They wanted to do their own thing. They wanted independence. And so many of us, we have that same tendency where we want to control our own lives. We don't want to spend our time in this intimacy with God. We have things to do. 
And so we go and we run and we try to control things. But man, that passage in James 4, verses 13 through 16, has never been so real than right now, where he says, come now, you who say, we're going to go to such and such a city tomorrow, stay there for a year, make a profit. He says, you don't even know what your life is going to be like tomorrow. He goes, your life is like a vapor. It appears for a while and then it vanishes. He says, instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, we shall do this or that. He goes, but instead you boast and all that boasting is evil. God says, you think you're in control? You're going to go to this city and you're going to make this money. How's that working out for you? I bet you in January, you had projections for this year. How's it going? Man, God says, even when you try to control your life, you're not in control. Don't you understand that there's something about how right now he just caused every single treadmill to stop? And it's driving us crazy because all we know how to do is run, run, run. And now suddenly I got to fix this machine. I got to because I got to get running. I got to get back on it somehow. I'm losing ground. But this isn't just to humble us. Yes, I believe God wants to humble us and show us, look, you can't control your life. You can't control tomorrow. But there's something even deeper. Earlier in that chapter, in verse 5, this is so amazing to me. This might be the most overwhelming truth to me in Scripture. In James 4, verse 5, it says, He yearns jealously over the Spirit that He has made to dwell in us. What? You're telling me there's a God in heaven. The Bible says that he sits on this throne in unapproachable light with lightning and thunder and fire all around him. That there's a hundred million angels worshiping him. And yet it says that being yearns jealously for me. Like he yearns jealously for you. And then then maybe this time of isolation has a purpose. And the purpose is he wants to be with me. He's saying, stop running, stop doing your own. I'm going to put an end. I'm just going to stop you for a while because I want to, because I, almighty God, want to be with you. I want to connect with you. Man. If there is one message to the church in Hong Kong, man, it's what he says to the church in Ephesus in Revelation 2, where he says, you're doing so many good things, but you've forsaken your first love. And what's crazy about that passage is he says, you need to change. You need to repent. He goes, if you don't repent, he says, I'll remove you. That's crazy. He's saying, I would rather not have this church doing all this stuff and not loving me. I want your love. Maybe the most frightening passage is in Matthew 7, when when he says, at the end, many will say to me, Lord, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Be still and know that I am God. The worst thing you could do right now is just get frustrated and stressed out and try to fix everything so you can get back on that treadmill. This is a gift to you. You have a loving Father in heaven, Almighty God, the one who decides whether you keep breathing for the rest of the day. And he's saying, I want you right now. It's a big deal to look at him and say, no, I've got something better to do. And once I fix this thing, I'm going to get running again. Don't do it. This is his gift. 
It's a time for you to look back at your life and go, why am I just running aimlessly? God wants you to get off this machine and get deep into a relationship with him. He wants you to have so much security in him that's not based upon how you perform. It's not based upon how much you make, how successful you are. It's a God who loves you unconditionally and wants you to be so secure in him that you no longer fear death or anything because there's so much peace. I'm telling you, the greatest moments of my life have been those times when I'm alone with him. I try to isolate myself every morning just so that I can join all of the angels in heaven that are screaming out, holy, holy, holy. And I just isolate myself in my room and I say, oh God, I agree with all the angels. And everything in my being just going, God, I was made to worship you. I agree with all the angels. You are so holy and worthy as a lamb. I can't believe he died for me. And those times when my soul is connected to him, there is so much joy, so much peace. And then he leads me into this, into this adventure. Man, I'm not saying we all just sit around and do nothing. There's work to be done, but it's about us running with him on this adventure. But it starts with you stepping away from that treadmill and having the core of your being connect with him right now. Don't waste another day. God, right now I pray for everyone who's watching this. Please, God, by your grace, even those who don't know how to get deep in relationship, pour your grace on them right now so that everything inside of them would cry out to you and they would find security in you that they would have so much joy knowing that Almighty God jealously yearns for them. God, I pray for peace. I pray for joy right now, God. Connect with your creation. Give us a deep desire for you. May we know you like never before. Help us to enjoy this stillness, this gift from you. In Jesus' name, amen.